Lindy is here today. Me and Lindy know each other for about, I think, 25 years we counted the other day. Yeah. We met when her children was really, really small. And um, yeah, I don't know if you remember it or if you know, but you and Chris has always been kind of, <laughs> um, I think when it comes to money, somebody that I've kind of put on a little bit of a pedestal, yeah. um, just in terms of how you manage money, in terms of how you think about, it's always been, you know, I don't think it was anything you ever taught, but it was something you lived. And um, for me, there's always been such an amazing, um, I don't know, just example to follow. Um, and I will remember, I will never, I will never forget it. One, one day, it, many, many years ago, we went to a, a, a camp. The kids were really small. And um, I remember that you guys had lent some money to some of the leaders, the youth leaders in our church. Sure. And um, on the way back in the car, Chris said that um, he's going to call the pastor and let him know that they don't have to pay the money back and that you're going to bless them with that. Sure. And that made such an impression on me. And I think to this day, many times I remember, hey, that is that was one of the one of the kind of the goalposts for me, like, hmm, remember to be like that. Sure. <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for that. Anyway, so Lindy is here with me today. Um, the main reason, and that is why I'm so excited about this, is because she has this incredible story about God, how God gave your house um but let's 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 just backtrack a little bit who's lindy who's chris who's the kids <laughs> <laughs> yeah so firstly it's it's for me and my prayer actually for me more than her because i'm like a housewife <laughs> in the afrikaans community <laughs> and yeah we've never spoken english together so never. so please oh. forgive me on my <laughs> <laughs> my delicious English. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, yeah, I am 50 years old this year. So married for 30 years. Uh, very good, very good years with a lot of um, <laughs> interesting slots in between. <laughs> a little bit of tribulation. A little bit of yeah, she's <laughs> new thanks for helping me there. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, but God's been really good to us. So um at the age of 18, I grew up in a house where well, we didn't actually know God. So we we were in a religious house. Um but we didn't have a personal relationship with God. Uh, my parents tried their best uh, the way they could, can only give what they could at that stage. But yeah, so when I finished with school, I gave my life to Jesus. Uh, it's a beautiful story on its own, how God just revealed himself to me. And there my journey actually starts. There it all started. Um, actually grew up moving uh, around a lot. Um, my dad had to... Um, change his job a lot so we had a lot of financial difficulties when when um, I was in home so my mentality was when it comes to finances you know like it's um, it's difficult and you know, it's supposed to be difficult it is <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> yeah but yeah so that's me and I have two daughters the one is now 27 and the other one 25 and I have a lovely son son-in-law but he's my son and um, we love him dearly and we also learn a lot from them now regarding finances and stuff um, the, the new generation is just so amazing we can learn so much from this new generation so yeah so that's me we love god me my husband our kids um we have our bumps in the family and out of the family and <laughs> all that kind of stuff but it's good like you say it makes you grow and we learn from each other and yeah so do you want me to start with the story? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely, I definitely do want to start with the story. But I think sometimes mm -hmm. when we talk about a great testimony like yours, um, many times it feels like, oh, it's just, you know, it's, it's like that thing that they say, you know, I'm an artist and you have an artist daughter now, you know, they say mm -hmm. that it's a 12 years is the journey, but it's overnight success. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. You know, and it feels almost, it almost feels like a testimony mm -hmm. like this is a, overnight testimony but for you it isn't yeah. you guys have been walking the road 
so many years in terms of houses, homes. Give us a little bit, a little bit of just an understanding of where you come from in the past three years if you've been married. Well, sure. Well, I do. <laughs> sure. <laughs> the first year, you, you being a chore. <laughs> so, but <okay>. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The first few years of our marriage, it, it was hectic because we both we both had to um, uh, save money for our marriage to get for our wedding and everything. So it was tight. Our parents had it tough, so we had to really make it work from our side. So we moved a lot, you know, not having children. So we rented a flat here and there and so on. And yeah, for about the first 10 years of our marriage, we really trusted God for a, um, just a home for the kids that we can just call a place, have a place that we can call home. And we prayed and we prayed a lot. And well, that's a story on its own because it's going to take too long. So... <laughs> So miraculously, we got a home. We got a home with also a lot of prayer went into the we got a hundred percent loan. We're very much afraid. My husband had his own business. He started it from scratch, so it's a first generation business as well. And yeah, but we, we took a stretch there and we bought a house and the company started to grow amazingly. God was just so faithful. Well, we had to write off a lot of debt um, in our journey in the business. We have a construction business. And, you know, sometimes just stuff happens and, and people owe you money and you owe people money. And it's just, you know, but sometimes when God speaks and he says, write off the debt thing, then you, you have to do it to, to go on. Otherwise, it's like a chain on your ankle keeping you back. And I remember one time we had a big fight, my husband and I, <laughs> about a 500, 580 grand debt that we had to write off, um, which could let us, you know, uh, uh, go under at that stage. And we had a friend pitching up there and said, oh, God said, you must just come and see us. what's going on here. And then we said, well, I said, well, we're having, a, <laughs> we're having a fight. At first, my husband said, no, you know, no, everything is fine. I said, no, everything is not fine. <laughs> I said, yeah, and so then he had a chat with us, and that was the first big amount of money that we had to write off. Um, and from there on, the company grew. It really grew a lot. And it started, we started really seeing how God just came through. Then the 2007 recession happened, and, and that really hit us hard. Um, so we grew quite a, in a kind of a, a medium construction company for um, in South Africa, and oh, my husband did so well. He had we had a few families that worked for us, a lot of um, vehicles that we had to buy and trucks and stuff. So the company grew a lot, but then the recession hit us, and. Um, yeah, so we tried to fight our way through that uh, for about six to seven years. Also amazing stories regarding that. Um, but then in 2013, after we saw a lot of um, attorneys and people just to give us some advice because we couldn't get out of that hole, you know. And yeah, so there we had to make a decision to let everything go. You know, to, we were married in what you call it, married in like a gemeenschap van goede. Exactly that one. I hope your friends, I hope your friends will know that that is not that one. Yeah, that one. We husband and wife, they want. <laughs> yours is yours and what's, no, what's mine is yours and what yours is mine. Exactly. <laughs> but everything was mine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, that was very, very hectic. So he was busy with a few um, jobs, and but all the all the advisors that we had said, no, we can't, we just can't carry on like that. So we had to, we've been liquidated, sequestrated, and everything. But at this stage, it was almost what eight years now. Yeah, so that after the recession, yeah. yeah. So he fought a lot. Yeah, it was very so tiring. It was a, a very tiring time in our life. I think he, we had emotional burnout, and yeah, it was just hectic for the for for South Africa as well because even the banks just cut the overdrafts and stuff. And yeah, it was it was really bad. So 
We lost the house, we lost the, the company, the office house, we lost our vehicles, oh, the furniture, everything. So we had to move in with our um, in-laws, with uh, our in-laws. And yeah, prayed a lot about that long story on its own. Um, and God woke someone up Sunday morning, the first two weeks of this whole process, and they didn't know what we were going through. And then they said, no, um, they woke up and they heard God just said that they must pay 10 grand off the six months home um, rent for until it's not necessary anymore. Just, just like that. It just came. So we didn't, you know, God just provided there that we didn't have to move in with, with, with our family and just to keep the children in um, senior levels of school. So we didn't want to, you know, disrupt them and everything. So God was so faithful in that. But yeah, we so, lost there a, so, so there was a period after you lost the house that you were staying in a rental place. Oh, that, yeah. That God provided through somebody else paying the rent where you were. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. And, and just so many people, you know, just dropping off. Vouchers, uh, finding us, telling us there's something in the in the in the post box in front, and then it was just so spot on every time that we needed. It was just such a humbling but thankful time, and it was just yeah, it was yeah, you know, like I say, it's a story on its own how God just provided for the kids and personal stuff, and um, but it was hectic. It was it was hectic, especially for my husband as well. Me trying to keep everything afloat for the kids, not trying to make it make it you know, bad. Um, but it was tough. It was very tough times, and we had to move a lot because renting. If people that rent will know. Um, you have to move a lot. Then they sell the place, or the rent goes up too high. Then you have to move again. So we moved a lot. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> almost give everything away just that I can just move in a day if I have to. No, it was just uh, hectic. Um, but in that, God was the whole time. The whole time he provided. The whole time he put people, community around us, just lifted us up emotionally, loved us. Um, when we couldn't anymore, then there was just this breath of fresh air just coming in from somewhere. And, you know, just, just being there, just providing just sticking us for a meal or whatever it was yeah it was it was tough um but it was beautiful as a family we grew very close in that time very very close well you know the whole story yeah but before we <laughs> before we get to before we get to the do you think the tough part had to do with preconceived ideas on what life should look like um i think it was it, the tough part was for me, um, I think more spiritual. I think for my husband, it could have been more, you know, preconceived ideas, like he's going somewhere with the business and everything was doing well and he was blessing people. Like he could just give money away left, right and center. And it was such a blessing for him. It was, um, and I think he had that idea that that, because he had a lot of work that he will be able to do that. And that's what he did. And then everything just crumbled. And and then that preconceived idea, but now what, you know? Um, and so, yeah, even for me, you know, like, like holding on to promises, praying, people giving you word, and then you keep on holding on to that promise and bleed your way through. Um, and, 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 yeah, taking extra loans out to just to pay people salaries and yeah so it was a, a spiritual fight it was it was trusting God the whole time and then well in that we got also got word um from a pastor from Ghana who didn't know us at all um we one night went to a to a congregation thing and they we were a bit late <laughs> and um yeah so we sneaked in there and sat and the guy was busy praying and everything his eyes closed and he had this um vision on how a tornado came and and took a building away and took everything away and just swept it clean and after it was swept clean um the word liquidation came up and then after that, God started rebuilding. And as he opened his eyes, he said to my husband, service, where is for you? 
And at that stage, that's not what we wanted to hear. <laughs> so we kept on fighting this thing for another two years after that word. But God reminded us of that when we got to a stage where we realized God wants us to go through this. And yeah, it seems like a little bit too spiritual maybe, um, but I wish I had just more time to tell all the little details. So on the evening, well, two years after that, on the evening that we had to make the, the decision, someone also had a dream and phoned us and said, long story how we knew them. Well, the guy didn't knew my husband. He only met me once. And he had, had a dream, dream and he said, he, um, uh, he, he had, had a dream. dream. He told his wife about his lady. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not the lady, it's her husband. But he never met my husband. So he said, his wife must make an appointment with us. He wants to meet my husband. He had this dream of a guy going down a gravel road, wanting to go through a farm gate. Um, uh, but he kept on going over. He didn't want to go through it. He kept on going over the gate. And then he got scraped and he got hurt and he, he couldn't do it anymore. And God reversed the dream and then he went through the gate. And as he went through the gate, there was this um, desert. And then... It was just desert as he went through. And, and a, a, a while, a, a, a inky, <laughs> little, little bit, a little <laughs> bit through the gate, it was just desert. And then there was this oasis with fruit and water and a lot of stuff. And that God said it will never end, but what we have to go through, we must go through. And that was just so spot on. People just gave us a word on being in a desert place. Our pastor thought my husband, he must take off his shoes. He's in a desert place. It, it was desert. It was hard. It was dry. It was our marriage took a lot of shots. It was, it, it, it was really not lacquer. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't. And But we went through it and we had a lot of anchors to hold on that God gave us. And he grew us in that time. And, yeah, like I said, I kind of lost my story. <laughs> I don't That's know okay. why. No, no, never, never mind about never mind <laughs> losing a story. I kind of also want to go go off track a little bit. Um, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm re thinking and remembering. Um, Chris changed his business name. Oh yes, that's so um, amazing. That is. Yeah, it is just 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 tell us a quick, you know, because yeah, because I, I don't know even know the whole story. I just know that I think it was budget constructions in the beginning or something. Yeah, yeah. So and then, and then he kind of had a change of heart and felt like it's important to Yeah, so way back in the beginning when he was still way back when the kids were babies, it was budget projects. And then also he got word to change it to his name, like his CF Sitzman construction. So when he changed it to his name, it started to flourish and he did well. That's when it really started building up and it was amazing. Um, I remember you helped us with the company birthday celebration as well. <laughs> remember, <laughs> you did so well <laughs> and we loved it. And yeah, so you, you will know it went so well. But that was just before the 2007 recession. Mm -hmm. And then it was CF Zitzman construction. And then when everything happened, and we had to close down. Um, well, it was closed down. We couldn't carry on on that name anymore. So it yeah, was liquidated. Exactly. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And then um, friends of ours, amazing family friends of ours, so many people just came around us and, and really were crutches for us. And this guy just told Chris that he's going to start a company and he wants Chris to be the... Um, the, the not, well, he couldn't be a director because of what, what we've been liquidated. So, so he told Chris, Chris that he's, he's going to be the director, the take everything on him, but he wants Chris to manage the company and work. You know, he wants him to handle it because he had other companies and this one now was then a construction company. So back then we were so thankful because I realized that kept my husband going, you know, and it was a little thing is here, a little thing is there, but it, Gave him reason to get up in the morning. Gave him reason to see people and not just to stay in home. And, and there was a lot of shame and stuff like that going through something like that. Um, so, and then he had to pray. And, well, we asked, well, God, what must the name then now be of this company? And then, God, well, my husband just felt um, it's, not he, it, it's not his company. 
he actually thought he doesn't, doesn't deserve to deserve a second chance. So he told him it's his, it's his company. It's not, it's not my husband's company anymore. It's God's, it's his company. And so he called it his trading, his tra. So the company's name is his tra. And yeah, so from then till now, uh, his company is, <laughs> is doing his thing. And uh, when my husband starts to stress again, I just tell him, but this is, was not your company. So <laughs> you don't have to stress. It's God's worries now <laughs> because it's his, his trading. trading. It's his trading. It's his trading. Wow. So that's where the name comes from. And yeah, and God's just so faithful. Well, always, oh, always it's, 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 it's tough to have that business. 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 Always being, always have faith, always to trust for the next month's income. And yeah, so it's not, it's not easy, but it's amazing to know that you must just keep God just close to you and you can't do it on your own. Okay. Well, let's, <laughs> let's get to the reason why we're here. <laughs> oh, that's super exciting. Yeah. So tell me, so tell me before, before this, before this, this story started, where were you guys in terms of a home and a house? The children was kind of out of the house already, yeah. you know, kind of grown up. So where were you? What was your, what was your hope? What was your dream in terms of having your own home, your own home again? Oh, yeah, that dream. I'm a homemaker. I love Hold on, making. hold on, hold on. I got to tell you, <laughs> hold on. Homemaker, this woman, one of the first memories I have of the Zitz months is that, well, one of the church camps, and I will never in my life get it. We are out. I hate camping, always. I've never, <laughs> camping, no, nothing. <laughs> Even me. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we come, we arrive at this, at this campsite, and there is this hotel <laughs> or the tent. Had a caravan pitched. I was blown away. Candles. It looked like a five-star hotel. That I got. I can't even remember where it was. But I was just like, this woman knows what she's doing. <laughs> and well, ever, I realized if you don't like something, you have to make it to like it. <laughs> but really, every, every home, every small little space you ever had was just gorgeous. It just comes naturally for you. Shane, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Yeah, I can tell them thousands of stories. <laughs> my wife and my mum have got stories also coming up. Coming up. <laughs> <laughs> That's also one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, back, back to back to you. Um, you you are homemaker, is what you said, Ross. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So when when Martin mentioned the candles, like my love language is candles. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> yeah, you can just give me candles. I love it. Um, yeah. So um. Okay, yeah, so the kids were, uh, God, just so amazingly provided for them to go and study, also stories on, on its own, and it was tough for them. They went through tough stuff. They were quite high-profile schools with friends that they really, really didn't have, have to see anything. anything. And yeah, yeah, so God formed them in those times, so really um, just, to, just to honor them and just, yeah, what they went through and how they just you know, holding on to God and just grew in him at that age was just for us all worth it. It was just, if it was just for that, I would say, okay, God, <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> but yeah, so, so, so back to the story is they were both out of the house, um, studied with their school, busy studying, um, busy pursuing their careers and then we decided to move in for the eighth time in 10 years we moved um, into a little post postage stamp this week <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> because we didn't have faith that God could provide for all of us but he always did you know <laughs> but just to save money so that we can have could help them get on their feet, you know, pay a bit less, less rent, and then we could be there for them as well, helping them here and there. So we did that. We thought it would be for a year, but the year went into two years, and, um, you yeah, know, then lockdown happened. Lockdown in that little post town. <laughs> and then both the girls moved back in with us in the little post town. <laughs> but it was, it was amazing, amazing times. times. So, so always the dream was always there again to answer your question to have a home. We always had home groups and we had 
oh, a lot of single people and young people in our own groups. And we always had, had to have a lot of to have a lot and a lot of and a lot of, and a lot of and, you know we love that we love having people, but with yeah you know, with all the moving you know, and all the moving stuff, and we couldn't have that, that. We couldn't quite, have a that. While, and quite a while. Either emotional, either draining, emotional burnout, 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 burnout,
because you had your little budget and, you know, it, it was like a, a, a brain pattern that started to become a feeler. So I totally agree with that. But yeah, so that house, you know, left it, couldn't afford it and everything. And so the lockdown happened, like hard lockdown for South Africa. And I think like the whole world, like, you know, in your little post, you know, your post stamp. <laughs> and we were four in that little post stamp now in the yeah, it's now it's now two it's more than two years ago now. Yeah, it's now just, yeah about what twenty four twenty six months now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So shame, yeah, my happy with you. Actually, that was amazing for us. We had such beautiful time. Um, back then, my one daughter still rented, and then the other one went to her in her flat, and they stayed there. They just that we had some more space. <laughs> But they came and sneakily visited us <laughs> every now and then. But yeah, so I think the whole lockdown happened and and we actually in, in this COVID time, a lot of fear just left us because my husband didn't have to work then. His, his business stopped and he had a bit of saving money because of all the cautiousness. <laughs> and then we just decided but you know what this is in god's hands the whole world is in this thing now and we can't take it upon us we're going to leave it in his hands we're not going to be fearful about this he's in control whatever then must happen must happen but we prayed and we had a prayer wall and we prayed for our friends and for many people and we actually had amazing time with god in that time and um and one morning i was still locked down uh, I think level three or four. I don't know what level, but a better <laughs> level. A better, a better level. <laughs> and I prayed and I said, yes, you know, God, I think we really did well in lockdown. <laughs> in this little space. But now it's enough. I couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore, you know. We couldn't have friends over. It was just you and me. <laughs> And it was really a <laughs> <laughs> And it was two and a half years then. So I, I, one morning I went into my room, I closed the door, and I sat on the bed, on the bed, and I prayed. And I chatted with God, and I prayed. And I fight with him, and I prayed. And I thanked him, and I praised him, and then I fight with him. <laughs> like everything happened that morning. But basically on, on a home, you know, basically on just that we can just have a home, place where the Kids could bring their friends and we could have grandchildren in and all that black like stuff. And I got up from bed, you know, pull myself together. We can do this thing now. <laughs> and there was this key on the bed. The bed was perfectly made and everything. And I thought, but whose key is this? And the key had a, had a key holder with a little heart in it. And it was this key. And I thought... Whose key is it? Maybe I took someone's key and it was in my jean pocket and it fell out. You know, I didn't know whose key was it. I thought maybe someone visited us. Just one single key on the key holder. Yeah, just one single key on a key holder. I actually should have brought the key with, but I'll send you a photo. <laughs> just, just, just lying there on the bed. On the bed where I sat. Coming from nowhere. From nowhere. And... Um, so I'm going to think, oh, okay, God, you start with the key then. Keys manifest. <laughs> so now, <laughs> yeah, well, it hit me between the eyes. And I was, well, you know me, I like always taking it prophetically and <laughs> trusting God. And when I showed it to my husband, he immediately said, well, maybe God gave us a key for our house. Maybe it will start with the key for, for the house. And when he said that, and I thought it, there was unity, there was just this, complete unity as if heaven has spoken now as if heaven has spoken and so we said okay we're gonna give notice where we stayed we're gonna give two months notice it was post our contract so then we were on a two month post basis period or actually a month but we gave two months notice and we said okay now we're gonna look for a home to buy that's that's the key that, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, because we were trusting for ours for the key, and the, everything was about thanking God for the key, you know. And um, so I put the key in my handbag, it was always with me. No one, no one claimed the key, I took pictures of it and sent it all over the place, but it was no one's key. 
And so as we started looking at properties, yeah, but it was expensive. COVID didn't bring the prices down, not at all. It was expensive. And we realized, yeah, okay, maybe we must just rent a bit bigger again. Just still rent, but go bigger. We, we started to think that because the properties was still double what we could afford. And in that, my husband got a phone call. And um, it was that same guy of that property of the deceased parents. And he said, you know what, the, the property is now empty for two and a half years. It's got a lot of trees. It's growing all over the neighbor's walls. It's, um, it's becoming a hazard for the community there. And they really need to sell the property. Can't we just make an offer? And he said, well, we're so, we know it. We can make something out of it. Being my husband in the construction, it's not my first choice property, um, but, but we, we couldn't afford it. So he said, well, we can only afford what we said in the beginning. So he said, well, make an offer. So the guy said, well, just make an offer. And then we made an offer what we could afford, which is half what they wanted. And he said, no, he will take, they're taking the offer. That, that's fine. Now we have to apply for a loan. Now, being liquidated and sequestrated and all that kind of stuff, we also had this fear of maybe the bank won't give us that loan again, you know, all that kind of stuff. We were rehabilitated, but, but there's that fear. Uh, money and money always goes with fear <laughs> for if it did for us. It, it, it feels like it, but it's also our nervous system and our worldly world is kind of trying to go against the key. Tell us, tell us, tell us that the key is not how can we trust in, in what God is really busy putting in place for you. Exactly, taking our eyes off the key. Yes. We took our eyes off the key when it came to money uh, quite a lot. Yeah. But so then we said, okay, we're going to apply for a loan. So we applied for the loan. It was not even a week. The loan was approved. And we realized we bought a property, which we haven't seen again in two and a half years. <laughs> and we realized, well, my husband still doesn't have work. It's still COVID. And, you know, we don't have money for the transfer cost. We had to Google. All that, but all of that, all of that is already just miracle, a miracle. You know, yeah. Having work, applying again, getting the same house, getting it approved. It's just... Yeah, God says something, it's that's the way it is. That, that is really so. Yeah. You know, we, we really saw it and we felt it and we were excited and fearful. Anyway, all the same. I interrupted. Yeah, no, but yeah, <laughs> it's really so. It's amazing. Yeah, um, yeah, so well, we bought a house now, and my husband booked a weekend away camping. I just said, <laughs> I just said, he can go and camp on his own because I do markets, I make uh, costume jewelry, and then I sell it on markets. So I had a market, oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> look a lovely earring. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I do for extra income now with my daughter's wedding, and you know. Um, story on its own but yeah so he went camping and i thought in between all the markets i'm curious now to go and look at this house <laughs> and i went to the neighbors of that property to get a key to go in and see how the house looked and he said now you go i'm going to spend time with god i need to he had his own many things to handle with god <laughs> because then he was still also waiting to see if the loan is approved so when he was away, the loan was approved. And then I could go and check the house out because I was still in, in Pretoria. Went to the neighbors, got the key, struggled to get through. Uh, it's, it's a quite a huge stand with lots of trees. The, 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 the lady that owned the property were a tree um, expert. So all the trees have tags. So like, it's like a forest. It's like, you know. <laughs> We had to, I had to struggle my way in through all everything that grew. The house was totally, totally overgrown, yeah, yeah. like a forest in there. Yeah. yeah. Opened the house with, with that key. Took my house, my eyes with, 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 my, with, with the neighbor's key. With the neighbor's key. Went in, and as I went in, the house being closed now for two and a half years. And a lot of stuff of the previous owners was still in there. Um, so, yeah, you could just imagine um, the work that needed to be done there because the people stayed there for a long time and 
back then there was still a lot of work to do. So yeah, without disgracing how it looked, but you can just imagine the, the oh my word, we bought this place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was as I walked through, and there was a lot of rats, and it was because it's so old. A lot of rats, a lot of rats, and in the smell of the rats, and it was just everywhere. It was dark, and the carpets was old and full of grease and stuff. And it was, yeah, you could see it was neglected for a long time. It's no one's fault that it looked like that. It's just what happened when you neglect something. So, um, all the energy left my body, like literally. I thought. We didn't, we were not patient. We didn't ask God, we just do it. We just did it. And I thought we made the biggest mistake. It's gonna cost a fortune to just move in. And being moving around a lot, me being a homemaker, I always paint the place. I always make it nice, do stuff. So I work hard on other people's properties. <laughs> and then I just didn't have the strength to work on this property that we bought. But now we bought it. Then um, the loan is approved, the contract is signed, and I felt like I've been actually robbed of something <laughs> because it's it's a mess. It's a mess. Like I can't actually describe it to you. It's it's a story. <laughs> <laughs> and as I walked out, and God said, Oh, so you don't think I can give you this mess that you can make something beautiful out of it? Said, oh God, I know you can, but Actually, you must give nice gifts to your children then. <laughs> you know, I know God can do it, and there's a lot of cliche about that. And I was actually kind of a bit, you know, not happy with the home. And he said, where's your key? Where's the key? I remembered, but okay, well, no, okay, God, where's the key? <laughs> so I went in my hand back. It was always there. The key was always there. Took the key out. That was on my way out. Put the key in the door. Whoops. It locked the door. That's not the key from the bed. That's the key from the bed. Not the neighbor's key. No. <laughs> the key from the bed. And I stood there and I locked it open again. And, and, I, and I locked just to see, well, what the heck is going on here? And as I did that, the presence of God just came. I had to hold on to the frame of the door and... I just sobbed. I just cried as the, his, his presence was just so caring and just so warm and just so um, amazing. And I cried. And I locked the door again and I locked it again. And it was amazing. And I phoned my husband there and I told him, and I cried, I couldn't speak to him. So he cried, why are you crying? And then he cried. And then I told him the whole thing. And I said, and I told him about the key. He can't believe it's like the key. Opened the door and locked the door. It's just so the front door of that house. Of that house. The bed key, the miracle key. So we call it the miracle key. And there all my energy came back. I had the strength, I had the energy to know that if God could give us a key for the house, he will provide for the money. He will provide to clean it up. He will do everything for us. You know, if he provide the key, then he could get give everything, everything for, for that. It, it just gave me so much energy knowing it's God. It's not our own hands that tried to make this work. Um, well, we had to, to dare and we had to get courage and apply for a loan again. And um, but we had unity on that. So it's 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 I think it's important to have unity that there can be anointing that God can bless, you know, that, that the anointing will just flow. So, yeah, so then we had three weeks to move out of that property where we gave notice, and my poor husband worked so hard. So the guy said he will pay some of the loads to take rubbish out there. So I think he paid for four loads of rubbish to, to get out of the property, but I think we had about 35 loads of rubbish that had to be taken out there. Um, we have photos and stuff of how it looked and, and stuff up to the wall, how stuff was just old videos and stuff. Yeah. So three weeks um, it took. Um, and in that three weeks, we had to now make the poor seal nice again, you know, to give it back to the agency that so that they can rent it out again. So we got all that keys in place, get it ready for, for the agency. So we had to get that place ready to move into this place. 
And there I discovered that the key, the very, <laughs> the miracle key, was actually our bedroom key of the post seal of the small um, of the small house. So it was actually that key of that bedroom. And it was kind of a lay down because I thought that now God didn't just miraculously put that key there. You know, I thought God miraculously just put the key there. And then God said, but I want to teach you something. You know, I want to teach you this key was your bedroom key. It, you and your husband's place of intimacy. And that morning you were there on your bed with me, being intimate with me. You struggled stuff through with me. You, you had intimate time with me in your place of intimacy. And he's, he, he clearly told me, I'm going to give you keys out of the place of intimacy to unlock doors. And he said, just be intimate with me. Be close to me. Be with me. Trust me for these keys. Um, because out of that intimacy, we both in unity trusted him on, on that key. And, and that, that key, key was, was the key, key that had opened, opened that front door of the house of the new house. And um, yeah, so we cut the other key, gave it to this one. So we still have our miracle key. <laughs> <laughs> then we're gonna lose that key. And yeah, it's been almost a year now. My husband worked so hard. One day he had 3000 steps on his watch on that property, um, but worked hard. We sanded the floors, we painted it inside just, just to move in, cut a lot of branches and stuff away. and. Yeah, so we've been so blessed. Um, we had a lot of friends over coming to visit and have lunch and have supper and just come for sleep over this and, and have a spare room for my married couple, daughter and son. And they have their own room and it's just so beautiful. And my other daughter have a little own flat underneath the house, which, which was also... <laughs> story on its own but it's lovely it's painted now and she loves it and yeah god's just been it, it so undeserving i feel humbled and i know nothing that we did made us deserve this nothing 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 it's just I've, i actually feel humbled to think that god actually did it but i they stay actually, thankful they, they actually gave me a house exactly I must still get my head around. <laughs> it is our house now. <laughs> yeah, that is the, the, no. that is so amazing, and I love if you. Yeah, I, I know you guys since forever, and um, when I walked into that place for the first time, I was like, "Yeah, this makes sense. This is this this makes sense." It that it is so amazing because God gave you the homemaker. He yeah. knew that that he knew that in your hands that house house would be would be would be safe, would be beautiful, would be would would. He would create it into what he wanted it to be. Sure. He wouldn't have given that to me and I wouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> no, I kept it all for <laughs> I would not have done with that house. But I think I also want to just get into the last bit of this testimony before we before we say goodbye. Um, is you guys have been living there now for almost a year. Mm. Yeah. And you haven't paid. Yo, no, not that house yet. Please, no, that's amazing. <laughs> so I had to Google transfer costs yeah. because I didn't know what it's cost, what it's yeah. called in English. Yeah. Yeah. So back then when we feared school, <laughs> we thought we don't have money for the transfer costs, but we, we made the decision, so everything happened. And then the owner of the property was just such a kind blessing of a guy. He's, he asked us just to move in. Uh, we can just stay there for free. We just have to pay for the water and electricity and the, the um, taxes on the property um, so that it's not empty. We won't charge us any rent um, until all the, um, the trust stuff and the deceased stuff are sorted out because there are a lot of stuff the, still the, happening. The legal stuff, legal within, stuff. within the, the previous owner's trust yes. and their wills and all of that. Still needs to be sorted. Yes. So okay. that still needed, the, 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 the cell was approved and everything on our side is just ready to go, but we are waiting for them now. Um, and yeah, so for the, this whole year, we didn't pay any rent. 
So we have transfer costs to money now. <laughs> so we save for the transfer fees, which we will we'll have enough now, more than enough now for that. And uh, yeah, it was just such a blessing. So God even knew we had, we needed time for the transfer fees. And um, yeah, so actually it's just more humbling and more humbling. And uh, having you guys over there when you come and pray with us, and God just coming and bless us, yeah. uh, just yeah. being there and you know, having you here. I don't know how long it's for, but <laughs> for now. Yeah, for now. Yeah. Oh, well, that, yeah, I just, I just love it. Um, yeah, I want to I wanna wrap the conversation, but um, I think they, we might have people who's listening, who might listen to this recording, who might, who might be sitting in a place where they are either trusting God for a home or a car or a husband mm -hmm. or a something. Um, if there's one thing you've learned over the past two, three years, what, what is the one thing that you would say, hey, this is what I've learned. This is this is what I've learned. Take 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 away from this. Does it make sense. Where you going with You do actually, especially trying to get into English. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, I think there are a few things. Must I only name one? No, no. You can go for a few things. Okay, definitely to kick fear in the butt. Fear, there's no place for fear. I think even for for your um, your marriage partner, for your lifelong friend, I think so many people have too much fear regarding that as well. And yeah, any any bit, any well, you know, you have to do it in boundaries, trusting God also in that. But fear was a, a great thing for us, a big thing for us. And today. Um, and then definitely unity. Um, unity, um, if you're in a relationship with your husband or with someone, business, maybe business decisions that you have to and make, is to have that unity and, and to be intimate with God on the decisions and to trust him because we have faith. We have faith that he can do it because he can. He can do anything. We have such amazing relationships with him. We know he can do anything. I do we trust he wants to do it for me? <laughs> or do you trust he want to do it for you? Like that, I think that also um, that stretched me that I grew a lot in that. I'm still growing in that. And God is now stretching us again on another <laughs> on another chapter in our lives. He's stretching us a lot, and we need to trust him on that and be intimate with him on that as well. Um, so if that answers your question. It does. And I think thank you for that because well not because, but we I'm in a community where we have um, so much information coming to us and God is giving us the most incredible tools to step into what God has given to us. Um, and I often say that intimacy is the first place. Oh. And you have just kind of confirmed it again and again. And we can use all those tools, but we can only use those tools. You can only use the key if you know that it's that it's only a key and that it's only a tool coming from a place of intimacy. And that the tool should never be the first place where we start. Um, but intimacy should be the first place yeah. where we yeah. start. So thank, thank, thank you just for reminding me again about mm. intimacy. That's sure. such a such a powerful, powerful place. Yeah, like you see, babies are born out of intimacy. No? Everything new, everything yeah, fresh. Born, but made. Made. <laughs> made. <laughs> born comes a little bit later. A little bit later. Made, made, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. Anyway, I think that was it. I am truly, truly blessed to have introduced you to my beautiful, glorious friend. I love you so much. Thank you for telling the story, not to me, just to me, but to the rest of the world. And I trust that the expectation I have that this will really shift things in your life today, that your heart will be open and that will really shift and bless you. Um, yeah, in two weeks' time, that's going to be another interesting conversation. Um, Yuli Dakok is currently traveling oh. through um, Africa as a woman. She's on a solo trip, and we will be speaking to her on how God is just providing on that trip. So keep your eyes and your ears open for that. Anyway, for now, I'm going to say goodbye, Lindy.
I'm gonna have some something more to drink. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Love you all. You.